that's why yellow makes me sad, I think. That's interesting. You know what makes me sad? You do! Maybe we should chug on over to Mamby Pamby Land, where maybe we can find some self-confidence for you, you jackwagon! Tissue. Who are you men? Who are you? Are you the princess of God? Are you some old weak man that's gonna let a woman manipulate and tell you how it's gonna be done? Set these women in order, shut them up, and let's do God's business. We don't need no weak, punk, fried, marshmallow, spirited, pillow Negroes. We don't need that mess with us. We really don't. I, I, I'm, I'm speaking personally. I can't wait to get rid of your weak ass. I don't want no weak people around me. If you cannot follow these scriptures, I want you to be gone yesterday. the high heels off and put on some boots please and whoso followeth her let him be let, slain. Wait, let him let him let him let him whoso followeth her let him what be slain with the sword do y'all see that so you had men following women back then the priest said whatever man is following this woman put them to death you been understand that the Most High cannot use a man following behind the skirt of a woman. I want to talk about the black, unconscious, aware community. The black, unconscious, aware community. The black, unconscious aware community that teaches us teaches people to worship they say the black woman is god none of y'all ever heard that okay the black now some of them sisters are smiling not they say the black woman is god one of them i heard say the black woman can have children without a man with the what kind of gland a Bartholin gland. And the black woman next to him is nodding her big black head. I'm like, there's some idiots here. So I, I'm thinking to myself, I said, no, nobody, nobody can be that, that stupid to really believe that. They said that the black woman is Mother Earth. She is of divine inspiration. They said, uh, no. I, heard, I read a poem a long time ago. Some of y'all heard of Nikki Giovanni. Nikki the poet, famous black woman poet. I used to be into that thing back in the day. So this, I had to reflect on that. She did a poem called Eva Ego Tripping. Very, very interesting poem. It was good while you were following, while you were black and unconscious. But when you come in the truth, you say, hey, something's wrong in this poem here. Yeah. But there was a few lines that I took note of in e Ego Tripping. Nikki Giovanni says that, she says, I am a black woman. I am so perfect, so divine, so ethereal, so surreal. I cannot be comprehended except by my permission. I mean, I can fly like a bird in the sky. Everybody goes crazy, Nikki, Nikki. <laughs> so I'm thinking, and I said, uh, nobody worships the black woman. I said, I can't believe it. I said, that's just talk. Abiel, do me a favor on YouTube. Type in, go to YouTube. Now this is Umar Johnson. Now Umar Johnson is a black psychologist, very well known. He's trying to get a uh, school for black boys and black girls. He's a follower of Marcus Garvey. He says one of his descendants is Frederick Douglass. What he teaches is no different than Amos and Wilson, who has the same teaching as Carter G. Woodson. Woodson. Same, it's a, since 1932, nothing has changed. Type in Umar Johnson, next what put Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. 
Now, when I saw this thing, it really, really, really took me back. I think it's the first video, yes. Really shocked the living daylights out of me. I never thought black men worshiped the black woman until I saw this. This video really, I, I said, what the hell am I looking at? I had to break the, I almost broke my TV. Can we take a look at this? Can we blow it up big? Now they go in, let me sum it up. They go to the, the, the burial ground where Harriet Tubman was buried. Now listen. Ready, young? Yeah. All right. All right, I share, I share, I share. We want to call on the most high God, Olofine, Olo Dudarme, Olo Dumare, Olofine, Olo Rom, Chukwe, Inyame, Amin Ra, God, Allah, Jehovah, by whatever name we know him, and her. Ashe. Ashe. Call on the Orisha, Obatala, Ashe, Yemoja, Ashe, Oshun, Ashe, Oya, Ashe, Shango, Ashe, Beji, Ashe, Ochozi, Ashe, Olokun, Ashe, Oya, Ashe. Babalu Ae Ashe, Aganju Ashe, Eshu Alekba Ashe. Ifa Ashe, Orumila Ashe. All Orisha, all spirits, all Netsaru, all Abusum Ashe. Okay. Now, we want to pull our base to Queen Mother Harriet Tubman. This is one of the greatest black women who ever lived, one of the greatest women to ever walk the face of the earth. Born in Eastern Shore, Maryland, escaped the freedom, never looked back, freed her mother, she freed her brother, she freed her father, she freed all of her siblings except one. One was so, so far south she couldn't find her, but everybody else she freed. She was hit in the head by a slave master early on in life, so she regularly had blanks. She would fall out, pass out, seizures, and despite the seizures, she kept on fighting and kept on pushing on. She was born to Ari Minter. she married a Tubman, but he was a weak man, so she divorced him and married another brother who was a lot younger than herself, Ashe. Um, she went on to become the chief conductor of the Underground Railroad, a railroad that spanned several years in existence that freed more than 300 people personally, thousands, uncounted. Uh, she took countless journeys, over 30 journeys down to the south. We don't know how many people Harriet Tubman freed. They say 300, it might have been 3,000. She said herself that she freed hundreds. And we just want to say, Queen Mother, that we remember you right now. We are here to remember you, to honor you, even though you passed away 101 years ago, even though you was born nearly 200 years ago, we will never forget you or the role that you played in our struggle, Ashe. 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 We understand that because of you, we stand, Ashe. Ashe. We understand that you are in the wind with us everywhere we go, Queen Mother, and we can call on you and tap on you, and that you will be there to help us, Ashe. Ashe. We know that you will travel with the babies. We know that you will travel with the young men and the young women and that you still will forever take our petitions to the feet of the Most High God and ask that the Most High God grant us what we need, Ashe. Ashe. So we will call on you, Ashe, and we ask blessings of you at all times, Queen Mother. We hope that all is well with you as you travel. We hope that your kith and kin remember you, that they travel and visit you often. And we just want to say thank you for all you've done. Thank you for risking your life over a hundred times. Thank you for never turning back or giving up. Thank you for even after saving your family, you came back to save the rest of us, Ashe. We thank you for giving us all hope, for teaching us that no matter how dark the day may be, the light is right around the corner, Ashe. We thank you for keeping up the fight to end enslavement of Africans in America, Queen Mother. Even though a lot of people thought we would never get out the chains, you knew it, you believed it, you saw to it, Ashe. Queen Mother, we thank you for fighting in the Civil War, Queen Mother. We understand that you even led troops in the battle once during the Civil War. We understand that you was a nurse, Queen Mother. We understand that you was a spy, Queen Mother. We understand that you was a scout, that you was a cook, that whatever was called upon of Queen Mother Harry Tubman, she did it, Ashe. 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 And we know, Queen Mother, that most of the time you didn't even have any money for yourself. You sent those checks back. You sent the checks back up here to Auburn, New York to buy that house that we just visited a few moments ago to take care of our elderly who are often turned out to the streets to die with no one to care for them. So even in your darkest time, even when your life was at stake in the Civil War, Queen Mother, you still thought more of the people than of yourself, Ashe. Ashe. So Queen Mother, we say before we leave you, to always keep us with you. And we will always keep you in heart, keep us in memory. I ask that you infect everyone here 
with the ashe of your energy. I ask that you dread everybody a piece of your ori, that you make sure everyone standing here is forever touched by the protection and the love and the wisdom of Queen Mother Harriet Tubman, ashe. We ask you, Queen Mother, with the divine power gifted into you by the Most High God, the divine supreme masculine and feminine energy of the world, we call on you to see to it that these young ladies out here, these young African princesses, grow up to be strong, mighty warriors just like you, Ashe. And we ask that for the brothers, here, there, and everywhere. If there's any weakness in us, that you sniff it out. If there's any weakness in us, that you snatch it out, Queen Mother. When we think of you, we think of the goddess Oshun. We think of Oya. We think of that fighting woman. We think of Sekhmet because you are the embodiment of divine feminine revolutionary energy, Ashe. You sisters, if any of y'all get caught up in this Queen Mother Goddess Earth garbage, you're gonna get put to death. The Most High said, what kind of God is he? A jealous, he don't like this. This type of, I'm gonna call it stupidity, and it's evil, it's witchcraft. When you, to, when you pray to the dead and ask the dead to, to intercede for you before God, that's what he was doing, that goes into, ne what's the word? Necromancy. All that evil, that's voodoo. Voodoo, uh, uh, Santeria stuff, that's what that is. I, I can't take it. Called on every made up God he could think of, Ashe. Ashe, Ashe, boy. That's, his, that's the big chicken, right? That was the rooster. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people heard what I said earlier. They were, they were probably a little bothered by what I said. I said because to come from all of the stuff that he said that she did, got us up into the freedom. For us to go and do that madness there, you, you, you got to look at it and say it was all for nothing. So all this ego tripping, that's what I'll call it. You, I, I thought you were going to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, at the end of all of that nonsense, she ended up joining the white woman anyway. She followed the feminist movement. See? Women's liberation, she followed her after that. She wanted to follow the white woman, so he's worshiping a woman that wasn't worshiping the white woman. It's the same cycle all over again. Can we get, uh, give me the scripture in Exodus, where is it? Uh, Isaac. The Lord is a man, that one. 15 and 3. 15 and 3, thank you. I, I want the women to read this thing, and I want you brothers, I want this to marinate in your head. The book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. One more time. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. He does not want us praying to women, asking for feminine energy and blessings. That is evil, and that is what has infected black men. Some of you brothers in here are infected, I'm gonna tell you straight, with that feminine energy of queen mother worship, the queen of heaven garbage. Because the Bible will say A, and the feminine spirit or woman will say B. I don't agree with that, give me that. Zephaniah 2 on 1, watch this. And this is for you brothers in Israel. I want you to listen good. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together, O nation not desire. So the God is a man of war instructs this for us to gather together. Now that's the Old Testament. Give me the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Let's see if it changed. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. We are what? How many bodies, brother? One. One body. One body is saying the same thing as Zephaniah 2 and 1. So when you get the spirit and your wife says to you, let's separate from the body. Is that of God? No, that is not of the Most High. So why this is popping up in Israel today, let you know that there are demonic forces at work. From there, give me 1 Kings 21, 25. This is what happens. 1 Kings 21, 25. That praying to women, glorifying women, the Most High hates that thing. Women are to honor men. Men honor Christ, and Christ honors the Most High. That's the order. That is the structure. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, 
whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So Ahab, that weak nigga, tell, tell it like it is, he was weak. He was emo overly emotional. His wife knew she could stir him up, meaning manipulate him. Get him to do against the laws of God. That's where every one of you men, listen good, brothers. Every one of you brothers married, some of you are not married. When you soon get married, this is going to be your trial. You either going to do what God says or listen to your wife. If you listen to your wife, this ain't for you. Your wife will convince you to go against Zephaniah 2 and 1. If your wife convinces you of that, this is not for you. If your wife convinces you this is not one body, we're to be separate and do our own things, this ain't for you. This is not for you. Give me 1 Samuel 15, 23. This is the spirit of Jezebel. This is the spirit of Jezebel, stirring the husband up to go contrary to the most high. We can do our own thing, baby. We don't need to be part of the body. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So any brother who listens to his wife saying rebel against God, that is like witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And stubbornness, that stubborn spirit, stubborn to do what God says, is like what? Iniquity and idolatry. It's like iniquity and idolatry. Like you worship Shango and Eligua. She said, oh, I don't worship that, but she's stubborn. She's rebellious. So God says, it's like you practice witchcraft when you rebel against what I say. It's like you are stubborn and worship idolatry when you rebel against what I say. First Ezra 4, 26. The forefather Zerubbabel warned you men. And you know what? In Israel, in our camp alone, we got so, there's a lot of brothers. We don't have enough brothers to do what we need to do. You got to know what I mean by that. I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you another day. Um, first Ezra 4, 26. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. Many brothers, Zerubbabel says, have won, run out of their wits for women. Put women on a pedestal and put God at their feet. Go ahead. And become servants. And become servants to women. For their sake. For their sake. Come on, read it together. I break too many parts. And become servants for their sakes. Many also have perished and have erred and sinned for women. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. Many in, in our camp alone, there, every issue that we've had raised up, nine out of ten, correct me if I'm wrong, have, who have been in the heart of it? Women. Women have been in the heart of every problem in Israel. Manipulating the husband, laying down on that pillow, right after they might have had a good time at sex, she says, baby, you know, I don't think we should be part of the body. We, we, we could do our own thing. And the husband goes, you know, you might be right. Ooh, that was good. Yeah, so she's putting the seeds in his mind. That's what Jezebel did to Ahab. Same thing. Same thing. All right, so what the bishop is going over, and I pray that you brothers can understand this and you sisters can get a gist of it. In Israel, us as, a, us as a body, we work together and this machine has order. That the elders set up, deacons, captains, right on down, and each one of you, even the youngest man in here, you have a part to play. But I'm noticing in different parts of IUIC that brothers think they're in control and their wives are controlling them. Right. And they don't even see it yep. themselves. They don't see it. We've heard that we're trying to stop people from growing. We've taught, you learn, you grow. But we're not gonna give any brother a blessing when he separates from the body. We're not doing that. And you don't need no blessing anyway if you think God is working with you. You've had a plan already in the suit. And for you officers over the states, if you men are weak, we're gonna move you up out of the way. If you got men there that you see like that, do not give them a position. Not, let them stay as members in the body. And if you're a godly woman, I want you to understand this now. I want everybody paying attention to what I'm saying. If you're a godly woman, like the bishop was saying, you would, if your husband is trying to separate, a godly woman would say no. Nor would she try to encourage him to do their own thing. This is not my thing. This is not Nathaniel's thing. This is the most highest thing. 
Brothers who's, went to others, who's with us that decided they want to go build someplace else, we've always given the blessing and we supported them. But we're not going to support hypocrisy. We're not going to support emotional men. Men that can't be told nothing. It's not of the most high. We're not giving you any blessings if you leave in sin. We're not doing that. That's crazy. And then you, you in wickedness and you're going to ask for blessings. Uh, Bishop, do you mind if I read something? Yeah, go ahead. I want to go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11, 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 7. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? Now I'm speaking specifically about me right now and I'm dealing with Orlando. Orlando in specific. Does anybody know what that scripture means? Can anybody here explain that? Nobody? Liam, give him a mic. Sometimes as a leader, you don't, you're not always austere with the men. So some of the men under you might take your, not joking around, but your, your kindness for weakness. Absolutely, that's exactly what it means. I'm going to tell you something. Please, do not misinterpret me. I'm laid back right until the BS starts. Right until the foolishness starts. And I know the bishop's been on me before about it. So you're going to find out, can I? Go ahead, you keep on playing around with these people. You all think it's a joke. The Sabbath day is to be kept. You're there to fellowship. I've heard word coming to people. All of a sudden, I'm telling these swelling titles about beloved elder, beloved bishop, anointed of God, all, these, all this crap that you call me, you're full of it. It's, it's, uh, right up until I tell you what you're doing wrong. The men, you men that's there in your different camps, you let people get up in your ears. I'm going to ask you, and, I'm, and I want people to be honest, what are the fruits you see in the leadership here? What is the fruits you see that you don't listen? You second guess, you argue, you, you, people get in your ear, you wonder why are they doing wrong? Do you know why we told that man we're not blessing him? Because his wife run him and he's weak as hell and he has an unforgiving spirit. After the bishop spent, spent an hour talking to him, trying to convince him to realize what he's doing is wrong. Then it gets to my ear, people saying, well, what's wrong with not starting your own school? That's evil as hell. That's evil as hell. What is wrong with it? Evil man understand if not judgment. And we're getting to a point over and over where beating this, and it's a woman again. Women again. Running their big, listen women, shut up. Don't talk. Do not talk. Your job is to follow. And if you think what we're doing is wrong, because I'm hearing about the garments, I got something I got to say. The garments, you're complaining about the garments. If you don't like it here, you can leave. Nobody asks you to stay. Go wherever you want to go. And if God is with you, so be it. We're not having no problem with it. But don't sit here and start your little clicks, side clicks, BS, murmuring, side understanding of what you want to break down. Women in silent in the churches. Get Second Chronicles 23. I'm going to, I want you brothers, watch what this woman does historically. This is, her name is Athaliah, the daughter of King Omri. Listen, pay close attention. Did I say something wrong? Nope. Second Chronicles 23, start at verse 1. Let's read it. Don't take a year to read it, just yes, read it. Second Chronicles 23, verse 1. And in the seventh year, Jeho Jehoiada strengthened himself and took the captains of hundreds, Azariah the son of Jeroham, and Ishmael the son of Jehonan, and Azariah the son of Obed, and Messiah the son of Adiah, and Elishaphat the son of Zechri into covenant with him. And they went about in Judah and gathered the Levites out of all the cities of Judah and the chief of the fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. And all the congregation made a covenant with the king in the house of God. And he said unto them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as the Lord hath said of the sons of David. This is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you entering on the Sabbath of the priests and of the Levites shall be porters of the doors. And a third part shall be at the king's house, and a third part at the gate of the foundation, and all the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. Let me explain what's going on. Early in the, chap the chapter previous, Athaliah's son was killed. He was a wicked king. What Athaliah did, this woman, the black woman, she killed all of the king's, the new king's son, 
but one of the servants hid one of the sons. And inside the house, because the house had tunnels and all that, they, the woman hid the son. So Athaliah thought she had killed all of the king's sons, the all the righteous seed of Israel. So she said she sat on the throne now. Now Jehoiada, the, high, the priest, says, you know what, I have a plan. We've got to get rid of this wicked woman. She's the devil the Bible speaks of. So he has this plan set up. What verse you at, Captain? Verse 6. Go ahead. But let none come into the house of the Lord, save the priests, and they that minister of the Levites, they shall go in. For they are holy, but all the people shall keep the watch of the Lord. Watch this. And the Levites shall compass the king round about. Now the king here is the young child. He was establishing a young child that had been hidden in the house for six years away from Athaliah. He said, now it's time, and once I got told Jehoiada, now it's time for that young man to become king. So this is Jehoiada speaking. Read that verse again. And the Levites shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whosoever else cometh into the house, he shall be put to death. Jehoiada, the priest, said, every man gather around this young man with your weapons. And whoever enters through that door, put them to death. Watch this. It's good. good. It's good. good. But be ye with the king when he cometh in and when he goeth out. So the Levites and all Judah did according to all things that Jehoiada, the priest. Y'all see that, Levi? See, don't think you rolled on your own. You rolled with Judah. Always remember that. Go ahead. <laughs> had commanded and took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that were to go out on the Sabbath. For Jehoiada the priest dismissed not the courses. Watch this. Moreover, Jehoiada the priest delivered to the captains of hundreds spears and bucklers and shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of God. And he set all the people, every man having his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and the temple, by the king round about. Strategy. That was order. This is order. This is strategy. You got to picture this thing. He had order set up with the men with their weapons. Watch this. Then they brought out the king's son and put upon him the crown and gave him the testimony and made him king. And Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and said, God save the king. You thought, you thought the white man made that line up right in Europe. When they hear say God save, that's from our forefathers. Go ahead. Now when Athaliah. Here's her, that woman, Athaliah. Here she is. I know, I know. <laughs> now when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king. She came to the people into the house of the Lord, and she looked, and behold, the king stood at his pillar at the entering inn, and the princes and the trumpets by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets, also the singers with instruments of music, and such as taught to sing praise. Then Athaliah rent her clothes and said, Treason, treason! Then Jeho then. Jehoiada the priest brought out the camp, the captains of hundreds that were set over the host and said unto them, Have her forth of the ranges, and whoso followeth her, let him be slain with the sword. Wait, pause, wait. Y'all didn't hear what he said. Oh, Read that part again about Anne from Anne whoso. Listen good. And said unto them, No, and whoso followeth. And whoso followeth her, let him be let, slain. Wait, let him, let him. Let him, let him, whoso followeth her, let him, what? Be slain with the sword. Do y'all see that? So you had men following women back then. The priest said, whatever man is following this woman, put them to death. You been understand that? The most high cannot use a man following behind the skirt of a woman. When you have a woman yelling treason, it's supposed to be crickets. Because she yelling treason. Why would somebody yell treason? Because you're looking for a response to redeem you. Who's going to redeem her? It's supposed to be men. If you're going to make a statement and say treason, who's going to be the, the force behind and forcing against the treason? In other words, men were supposed to say, who the hell said that? This woman? Oh, she ain't said nothing. That's how that's supposed to go. Right. So now, that was the Old Testament. Let's see the New Testament. Let's see if things changed. Revelation 2.20. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 20. This is for you weak, effeminized brothers. Let me see what my wife got to say about it. Let me see what she says. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, 
which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So you had a woman in the church of Thyatira. Now this Jezebel is not the same Jezebel as when you read in Kings and Chronicles, but it's the same spirit. The same seducing, manipulating, be spirit. Go ahead. And I gave her space to repent. So the Lord said, I gave her space to repent. She can correct herself. Go ahead. Of her fornication. And she repented not. When a woman got a spirit like that, it's hard. I'll say it like that. It's hard for her to repent. Go ahead. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Y'all see that? Go ahead. And I will kill her children with death. What do you think her children are? Now, all this is symbolic. It ain't talking about she's popping out babies in the church. Who is her children? The weak men following the woman. Christ said, I will kill her children. Whichever one of you brothers is following a woman, God said, I will kill you. We have been brought up in this effeminate mindset from great auntie to grandma to great auntie, mama. Now it's the wife. Let me see what she got to say. Most of I can't use a man like that. He already told you he's a man of what? Here you go. Let me ask my wife if I can go to war. Get the hell out of here. You got to be crazy. Go ahead. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine. Go ahead. And Watch which, this. And which have not known the depths of Satan. Wait. The depths. The depths depths of Satan. Meaning what? There's what? There's levels. There's levels following behind this woman. There's levels. That's why that what we just showed you with Umar Johnson, that's another level there. But here in Israel, in, the, in our camp, there's another level, another depth. Let me run behind the woman. Like, for example, when I thought, y'all remember when y'all came in? This, you remember this? We'd be having a council. The woman will get the baby and throw it in the brother's arms. Here you got all the men, we plotting what corner to take and overthrow the, the woman throws the baby in the brother's arm. We're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Brother, get us. This mindset got to stop. It got to stop. Here another thing. We all talking, the woman, going, she's looking at her husband, and she goes like this. <laughs> and we all watching. Nah, I ain't talking about that. <laughs> we all watching. What the hell is this? He gets up. Excuse me, brother. <laughs> I said, no, this, this dude here, this is a weak, effeminate. We can't, the Lord can't use this, man. And we see brothers. The wife gets up, she leaves, and here go the brother. And the mister, he packing his bag. Got to hurry up and go. The mister, what's, what's the Mr. Magoo? What the hell is this? The Lord, oh, brothers like that, you in, if you in Atlanta, it's time for you to go. If you in New Orleans, time for you to go. Orlando, time for you to go. New York. D.C., Arizona, Virginia, time for you brothers like that to go. We ain't, go, ain't, no law, we ain't at a loss for, what's the word? word? We ain't gonna cry no tears. Give me that scripture, Ecclesiastes 16. This is why we ain't gonna cry for you. And while you get I wanna say something. And don't think, because we've had this before, don't think you're gonna bait us with offerings and think you're gonna move yourself closer to the body. Listen, thank you. People complain, and when we say something, we give you back your money. Go, whatever. You're not gonna buy us off with swelling titles or offerings to the congregation. We're not those type of men. Exactly. We're not gonna be bought off. We don't care. Listen, thank you, but you the devil. <laughs> Wait, wait, uh, Isaac, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 read that, read that. I'm sorry, I gotta say, because remember that happened? Remember that happened, somebody didn't like what, what you had to say, and they said, well, give me back my offering. Hurry up and mail it back to them. Are you serious? Are you crazy? We look like stupid. You think you, you're going to manipulate us and to follow you and not follow you? We'll go back in these corners and rebuild this thing again. That's right. Most high spirit be with us. Come on. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 16 and verse 1. Desire, not a multitude of unprofitable children. This is why we don't care about numbers. The Bible says do not desire a what? A multitude of unprofitable children. So you effeminate brothers that run behind women, we can't, God can't use you, much less us. Go ahead. Neither delight in ungodly sons. Don't delight in ungodly sons. So this goes back to what Deacon Laba was saying. You brothers out of state that got so many questions. Some of y'all been with us for a year, two years. You know our character. But soon as something come down, now you're not sure about us now. We might be the devil. Get out! 
get the hell out. We don't need you. Come on. Though they multiply, rejoice not in them, except the fear of the Lord be with them. That's the only way we want you to stay, if the fear of the Lord is with you. Come on. Trust not thou in their life. The Bible says don't trust in their life. Neither respect their multitude. And don't respect their multitude. Oh, IUIC is deep. Well, we know a lot of these deep brothers got to go. It's too many. We got a lot of wicked brothers amongst us, hiding secretly undercover. Go ahead. For one that is just is better than a thousand. The Bible says one just brother is better than a thousand. That's why, like, can I just say that, Bishop? Can I just, all you need is one decent, good brother that follows the Lord. We'll start this thing all over again. We did it before at the last school. We'll do it again. We ain't crying. We ain't shaking in our boots. Was that it, Captain? And better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. Get 1 Corinthians 7.29. This, you brothers that are married, and you're not sure about should you follow your wife or not. This is what the Bible says. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. Listen good, listen good. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. What does that mean? What does that mean? We have to be about the Lord. Some brothers, what, some brothers say the same thing you said and change, run behind their woman. My wife set up a website, so I'm following behind her. We're going to do our own thing. My wife is wiser than all. All the sisters are wicked. This is what the brother said. All the sisters is wicked except his wife. His wife is so holy. She got, she's wiser. So explain that verse now. Yes, this is saying that the Lord's work takes priority. Right. It's saying the Most High come first. What this Bible says come first before your woman. If you men can't understand that, this ain't for you. God, give me that Psalms 133 and 1. You are not, you are forbidden to put your wife over the word of the Most High. It is against God's commandments. Psalms 133 and verse 1. 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The first thing you men got to understand, God said how blessed it is for brethren, brothers, men to dwell together in the mind of what kind of mind? Unity. That's something black and Latino men have yet to attain. Here comes the woman. You don't need to be unified with them. I got the skills. We can do our own thing, baby. He like, yes, honey. The hell is this? Go ahead. What are you going to say? <sighs> Yeah, let, uh, a while back, the leadership we had dis we had discovered we had discussed order, and we had policies written that were sent out to the different camps. And when they were when we when we were examining them, I had certain certain brothers came to me and they said, "Man, you'll put that document together to throw people out of school." And I answered them, I said, "You damn right, because we don't need no weak punk fried." marshmallow spirited pillow negroes we don't need that mess with us we really don't I, I, i'm i'm speaking personally i can't wait to get rid of your weak ass i don't want no weak people around me if you cannot follow these scriptures i want you to be gone yesterday and and for anybody to think that because you leave it we got to start over no that's when things get better because the strong anytime we kick we got wicked niggas out of this we always went we always went to the next level so we ain't, it ain't that we're going to go down when you leave. Praise the Lord. Well, let me say this. If, if you're a weak-minded man, if you can acknowledge it, we can help you. Right. If you want to acknowledge it, listen, my wife, she run me. It might sound embarrassing, but you can be helped. We're not going to ridicule you. We're going to help you. We're going to help strengthen you in the scriptures. When I first came in the truth, my wife, my wife, she was there. We came in together. I would try to read, and I had a very weak voice. And the Lord said. And the elder at the time we, we, was Lahab. He would say, why is this faggot reading the book? Exactly. I That's need exactly. a man to read the exactly. scriptures. Exactly. You sit down. Exactly. And I was crying. Y'all laughing. Y'all laughing. I would laughing. go home and practice. And the, uh, uh, uh. We, we, the point we, is, my spouse was went crushed. We went, went through, through that. It too. We went through that. We knew they was not trying to destroy us. They wanted to bring the lion out of us that they knew was there. There right. you go. So they talked rough to us. That's how they dealt with us. So, they said, you don't like it, get the hell out. Exactly. So the point when I made, when I said weak brothers need to go, 
I'm not talking about those who are willing to get, like you bringing up, Elder Kana. We're not talking about if a brother has a weakness. No, this is the reason for the hospital, for you to come get fixed. But if you're going to rebel against it and then try to take other brothers and sisters with you, nigga, you need to go yesterday. Exactly. If you want to get yourself right, come on in. That's what we're here for. Let's go to First Peter's 1. First Peter's chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. You know what the scriptures tell you? Strengthen your mind. Strengthen your mind. Why? Read on. Let's see. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So it says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Be sober-minded. Don't be easily stirred up. Don't let anybody, don't let your wife or any of your child or anybody stir up your mind. Be a clear-thinking person. Listen to the facts. Listen to what's happening. It's weak-minded men whose minds are not girded up. As soon as something happens, then all the scripture they learn goes out the window, and you're like, listen, brother, you may not fully, and I'm telling you right now, I understand some of you brothers, year two, three, four years in truth, you're still learning. You know, you haven't been through anything yet really serious. No, I don't know in all cases, but as you go through situations, that's how you gain experience that you have to endure. But even if you don't fully understand certain things, listen, we're not here for your detriment. We're not here for your money. We're not here for your women. We're not here to make you look bad. We're here to build you up. So if you don't fully understand, just listen. That's why I tell young men, keep quiet. Also, young men there online, I see a lot of brothers very wordy on Facebook, got 15,000 scriptures, always like to argue and battle. I'm watching those spirits, and I, and I spoke to the bishop. I see them out there. Anytime you see women that's overly devoted to God and always posting something, they full of crap. <laughs> Brother never has a problem full of it. That's not reality. But the point, let's go back because I want to get died. I want to read it again. Read it from the top. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. You know how you gird up your loins of your mind? You apply these scriptures. So when situations arise, that's when the scripture is supposed to kick in. One more time and I'm going to finish. <clears throat> read it. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Strengthen your mind, men. Strengthen your mind. Don't let nobody, move. don't let no women move you. And then any godly woman wouldn't want a man like that, nor would want to do it to a man like that. You let a woman control you. You think Christ going to let us control him? Who are you men? Who are you? Are you the princes of God? Or are you some old weak man that's going to let a woman manipulate and tell you how it's going to be done? Set these women in order. Set them up. And let's do God's business. Read it one more time. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you. Do you understand what that means? We're working for the kingdom. How are we talking about this Mickey Mouse women issues? Foolishness for the prophets of God to be dealing with. Foolishness for a man that was a captain. For you officers. If you're an officer, I'm telling you, you're going to be in the back of a room as a member. Because we have no use. Brothers talking about they're going to run away. Their wife is going to, if my wife leaves, I'm running away. Well, run, 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 run. Run, 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 hurry up. I'll lace up your sneaker for you. Run. You're not a man of the most high. He didn't raise men like that. You think David or forefathers were like that? Their wives came before them and prostrated before them. And you men are scared your wife is going to leave. So what? She's making decisions. She's, make, she's telling what she doesn't want to do. Does anybody tell, any of us, do we have the authority to tell Christ what we want to do? No. Does Christ tell God what he want to do? Christ said, I don't do my own will, but my Father's will who have sent me. So when it gets to you and the woman, why is there a hiccup for? Because you're weak and she a Jezebel. That's the problem. That's where the hiccup. Does that child tell you what they want to do? So why do you counsel with your wife about what to do? What is the direction that we're going to go? No. It don't go like that. These are my counselors here. Not that I don't speak with my wife and talk about things. Don't misinterpret. We ain't belligerent. But when it comes to the body, the movement of the body, I don't discuss with my wife unless she's saying, listen, you are breaking this commandment. And she better come to me with all subtlety, I mean with all, all humility when she speaks to me with that. But other than that, these are the men I counsel with God's business. When I ask your opinion on what to do, woman, and I have that in Orlando right now. Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I don't want, you don't, then leave. You're going to do it. If you don't want to wear garments, 
feel free. You don't have to wear it. You just got to do it out there. Go build out there somewhere. But here, we're going to do it the way it's set up. And if you think these men are not the men of the most high, then buy. So who has a problem with the leadership here? Who doesn't have a problem? All right, then we shouldn't have these conversations no more. Because I'm telling you, I don't, I, I depend, I'm, I'm, you know I'm so pissed off because I heard, once again, somebody, some woman run her big mouth about, I don't see why they didn't give them their blessings to start it. Shut up, damn it. Um, Sirach 27 verse uh, 11. Because the elders keep asking questions. How did it go from we were righteous last week and now we're niggas the following week? That don't make no sense to me, but it makes sense in this right here. Sirach. Chapter 27, verse 11. The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom. So the conversation of a godly man or woman is always with wisdom. Not emotions, French stuff. Not that. That's ungodly conversation. Read on. But a fool changeth as the moon. As the moon has different cycles and changes, so is a fool. One minute we're righteous, next we're the devil. One minute give me your blessing. Which one is it? Yes. You sound confused. That's being double-tongued, double-minded. You're unstable. So you want to follow an unstable leader? Go follow him. It's, it's, it's not a problem. Whenever someone leaves, when 10 leave, 15 show up. That's right. When two leave, 12 more come up. So go. By all means, don't, don't have us hold you back. Please leave. Be, with all your sagacity, please leave. You're so wise and deep. you Elijah. Come back from the generation. you Elijah all over again. Exactly. you back. Go. Take Secret Santa with you. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, as young... Uh, uh, you got to look fact when fact you understand there is something they call lie that is fact fact is this as young as that brother was what is that four almost five years then as young we see that brother potential but his wife didn't see the potential we see in the brother he did she destroyed the brother but a young that brother here is make to be a captain like uh, the deacon uh, just saying good reports but why would little thing like that shock you that's why the elder just said from now on, any position we give a brother, you have to be worthy. Then we got to check your wife. We got to go deep in within this thing. God is, God is showing us something, man. God is showing us something. Can, can I ask the brothers a question, Elder? Good. Let's say this didn't unfold and we had no beef with him. And he was doing his thing quietly with the website and he was doing everything like all that sneaky stuff that was being done behind the scenes. And he comes to us on good terms with no argument, no discord, his house and good report, should we allow him and give him as our blessing to go off and do his own thing? Somebody in the audience tell me. I see you shaking your head with the glasses. Why? Who's confused? <laughs> uh, because it's not part of the body. He is a part of the body. He wants to go off and do his own thing. He has his own website. He has his own breakdown. You mean he be part of the body? Right. He, he He's still wants to be a part of the body and do his own thing right. or That's to be separate. About. Right. Him, should we still give him our blessing? No, because no. he's not part of the body. I'm going to answer that. No. Uh, <laughs> because 1 Corinthians 12 and 12 says remain as one body. Okay. Remain Good. as one body. But we I'm, went over that. I'm going to show you guys now that if we was to do that to him, it will be because we hate him. Go to 1 Timothy 3 verse 5. <laughs> I'm going to show you this is the key reason why we cannot do it, even if he doesn't understand that there's no separations, there's no divisions amongst us. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? The first sign that you can take care of the church of God is you know how to rule your house. But read the next scripture. Not a novice. Not a what? A novice. Five years in this truth is a novice. You got niggas now trying to set up Israelite camps with less than five years. On YouTube now running their mouth like they've been in this a long time. Read it again. Not a novice. Read on. That's being lifted up with pride. That's what's on him right now. Pride is on him right now to say I can do my own thing. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. So if we hate him, we will tell him, go ahead, do your thing so Satan can put his hands on him. Okay, as much years as I have in this truth, if the elder was to tell me, Deacon, go off and do your own thing, I'll say no. I'm not doing it. Okay, because I still have more to learn as this body is growing to deal with such a large capacity of people. I'm learning every single day. 
And I got four times the amount of time he got put in. And if the opportunity was given to me to branch off and do my own thing, I will not do it. Because I know that Satan is waiting for me. But this guy don't know the scriptures, so that's why he did that, because pride is on him. I got to say something. Just real quick, Elder. The book of Psalms 82 and 6, please. Psalms 82 and 6. I got to go back to what uh, Elder Kana said. Because with all of this explaining and all of this stuff that we're saying, it's almost as if we're trying to convince. And y'all should know better. Read it, please. Psalms 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Gods, hold it. That's all I need. Ye are gods. Gods are talking about judges. Okay? We're the judges on this planet. All of you men are supposed to be able to judge matters. You shouldn't be confused over simple stuff like this. this I'm really annoyed, me personally. I'm, I am annoyed that people are confused about, these, about this small mess. Mm -hmm. Right, get a uh, Jude 19. We're almost done, but I'm gonna go through these scriptures. I wanna touch on uh, the thing that brothers be saying. But separating yourself from the body, when 1 Corinthians 12 and 12 says there is one body, and you want to separate, here's Jude 19, read that. Jude 19, these be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. So any brother who follows behind his wife to separate from the body, they do not have the spirit of God. Because God said, gather yourselves together. God said, operate as one body. Ephesians 4, 3 says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Any woman that manipulates her husband to do contrary to that doesn't have the spirit of God on them at all. Now, let me talk about you brothers that are on group, different things brothers be saying, double honors, you be saying triple honor, what the hell you talking about? I don't know. Let me tell you about this foolishness. Let me tell you, I, I can't stand that. Read Exodus 20 and 12. Quadruple honors, all that's BS. Exodus. That's like blowing smoke up somebody's behind. What the hell is this? Where we at? Exodus, Exodus 20, 20 and 12. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now that is the law for your earthly mother and father. Honor them. Okay, but now, I'm going to take it up a notch. Watch this. Get me Hebrews. Hebrews 12 and 9. Your earthly father and mother at times have whooped your behind. I'm not talking about some of y'all was raised in foster. I'm not talking about those of you who had real father, real mother and all that. Watch this. Hebrews 12 and 9. Hebrews 12 verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. And we what? And we gave them reverence. We gave them reverence, love. Go ahead. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? So now, your own earthly father whooped your behind, chastised you. Your own mama whooped your butt in this world. Is that right or wrong, brothers? Okay. And it was all done primarily to correct you on something they inst instituted in their house. So now, get First Timothy 5 and 1. So you know that. God, Paul, the Most High had Paul re remind Israel that your own earthly parents rebuked you and chastised you. Come on. First Timothy 5 verse 1. Rebuke not an elder. But entreat him as a father. So the Bible says, rebuke not an elder. So when we correct you, oh, but no, but like, uh, uh, you slandered me. How did I slander you? You said that I said gifts was evil. I didn't say that. What'd you say, brother? I said secret Santa was evil. Okay, I apologize. Secret Santa's evil. What's the difference? This is foolishness, woman stuff. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. So, it says double honor. So if your own earthly father and mother chastise you, corrects you, rebukes you, and you take it, here we are, we ain't putting our hands on you. We correcting you, in the scriptures of brother, that's wrong, you're out of order. Now you so, your, 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 your estrogen has raised to another level. Your estrogen, 
<laughs> he didn't say testosterone. He said estrogen. <laughs> say, go ahead, Elder. And your breasts are swollen, and you are so angry because I use the term of gifts and pose the secret Santa. You got to be kidding me, brother. Take the high heels off and put on some boots, please. What the hell is going on? You know something, what it is, is we are all family. Just like you got your earthly family that you deal with, with all they BS they do, you still deal with your earthly family. And it's truth. You're my family. I, there's, there's, no, there's no place for me to go. So if we have problems, we'll, we'll go through it. If there need to be apologies made, we make apologies and we move on. You don't run away. You don't leave nowhere. There's no way for me to run to. This is it for me. This is my family in Christ. Only way I leave from here is people saying they ain't going to keep the commandments. And I mean, all of you got to say it. Because if one of you say, I'm kicking you out. <laughs> but the point is that there's no, uh, men of the most high, we don't, we don't you know, the, the, the solution is not to run away. That's not the solution. That's the, exactly. The, the problem we have is, I went with the eldest pope when it says, with the double honors. It's the swelling titles and I keep on talking about it over and over again. And it's really sickening to me because when we speak to him, we're trying to guide you. This is our job to do. We're not out to hurt. You have a lot of words, you're very wordy, some very disrespectful, raising your voice. The bishop is telling you, call him, you won't pick up the phone and call him. Very rude. Exactly. And then you think you're gonna go build something out there? You think God is gonna be with you? Well, go ahead, let's go ahead and try to figure it out. Okay, let's see. Exactly. Who is the newest member in here? The newest member? Who just came today for the first time? Okay, you stand up, young man, stand up. I'm going to ask you a question. I want all y'all to take a look at the young man. Just take a look. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. What are the name of the four major empires that ruled the earth? Four major ones. Rome. Okay. Mm. Um. Stage right. I okay. Can. That's fine. That's fine. We know you knew. Now, listen good, brothers. Suppose I say right now, let's make him a captain of 25 million. Does that change his level of understanding? No. The title, brothers, you brothers, officers, listen good. Your title means diddly if your works and understanding don't match it. Understand it. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I just want y'all to see that. Because you got been in truth four years, five years, can barely get through Deuteronomy 28. I'm gonna I'm a deacon today. Oh, oh you're a deacon. I'm a captain of 25 million. The titles mean nothing. Understand it. The titles mean nothing if your actions and understanding don't balance it out. <sighs> okay. Now, Leviticus 19:32. We just read about double honors to those that labor, labor right? Leviticus 19.32. We're almost done. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. The hoary head is the brother senior in the truth. Rise up shows what, brothers? Respect. You stand. Respect. That's what God's law is. Rise up before the hoary. And a hoary head just ain't an old man because you can have an old fool. It's all about those with time and experience in the word of the most high. Like Moses, like Aaron. Okay, from there, watch this. Give me Exodus 22, 28. Yeah, go ahead. In London, they had what is known as barristers. That's these judges with the wool caps. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Those judges, the, reason, the wool is supposed to represent wisdom and age. So in a courtroom, you would stand up. That's, that's where they got it from. That's where these courts got it from. You see, a lot of people don't realize the significance of the Bible. Okay, so when it says, y'all shall rise up before the hoary head, meaning the men of wisdom, when meaning the men, the judges right. in the courts. That's what, that's what that's talking about. Right, that's where Esau got it from. That's where he got it from. Okay. Exactly. Exodus 22, 28. Exodus 22 and verse 28. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Y'all see where it says gods there? Thou shalt not revile the gods. Who got a little number in their Bible? A little number should be in your Bible, and it tells you what that word should be, the proper translation of that word. Anybody? What you got? It says judges. Right, judges. But it's calling the judges. What's the word it's calling them? 
gods. Gods. That's the reason why I refer to Psalms 82 and 6. That's the reason why I went there because you, all you men are supposed to be judges. You're all supposed to have a judge, judge mind. Right. You men coming in, you brothers that have been here for a while, you are the gods the Bible is talking about. Why? And that's a high honor. That's why Christ quoted David. He said, doesn't the scripture say you are gods, but you shall die like men? We don't realize who we are in the spirit. The Bible says we are gods. As gods, we are to judge righteously based upon the most high's word. It's so simple. Right. Now go to Acts to show you what Paul said about that. Acts 23 and 5. This is when he smacked the, uh, no, I mean, he cursed the high priest out. Right. Acts 23 and 5. The book of Acts, chapter 23 and verse 5. Then said Paul, I was not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. That goes back to Exodus 22, 28. That law that we just read, thou shalt not revile the gods nor curse the ruler of your people. You just hear, so people can hear you. Right, it's saying the same thing as Paul. You, he's giving you the breakdown of what it meant in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It said, "Thou shalt not." What's what the last part of that verse said? Speak evil of the ruler of thy people. That's what it meant. <clears throat> right, not okay. to speak evil. Not to speak evil of the rulers. Exactly. So, brothers, becoming born again. Born again means to do what? To change. Change your ways. So, becoming born again from a Negro state of mind. It's hard for a lot of blacks and Latinos. It's, it seems hard. Every Negro that left here was because they could not do that. Right. That's the, everyone that we've named that, that fell out and said they're going to do this, when, when they all left in sin, went and called themselves establishing something else and going to ask for blessings at the same time, that's, that's an oxymoron. You're going to go try to set up something in sin. You know damn well you ain't about setting up nothing. Your whole reason for leaving was because you don't want to be in order. And order is here. That's the problem. Let's just be clear about it. The whole point was they wanted to get away from the discipline and the order. Mm -hmm. Period. Can I, can I add something, Elder, to what you were saying about... Paul had this problem with Negroes disrespecting him as a father. Not... Admonish, not um, knowing their place for the work put in. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Exactly what the elder was speaking about is exactly what we're dealing with now. Look how he addressed the situation. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. I what? I warn you. So that's what we're doing today. We're warning you because just like Deacon Yawasab said, the quickest thing you're going to find from a Negro is disrespect. Yeah, they don't respect their own parents. They don't respect the spiritual parents. They don't respect their wife. They don't respect their kids. They don't res All they respect is weed, guns, fighting. They're very disrespectful and undisciplined. So let's read that one more time. I write not these things to shame you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you. So this is a warning. Read on. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ. You got a lot of people who learn the scriptures and can give you advice in Christ. Read on. Yet have ye not many fathers. Say that again. Yet have ye not many fathers. You don't have a lot of fathers in this truth. All you men that are in that crowd right now, you don't have a lot of fathers in this truth. You got two fathers to look up to in this truth. That's the two bishops you got right here. That's why Paul said you don't have a lot of fathers, spiritual fathers. Read on. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through begotten the gospel. You, begotten you meaning I brought you forth spiritually as your spiritual father. I dealt with you the way a father deals with his son. I begotten you. I brought you forth into this truth. So respect me on that is what Paul is saying. Read on. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Do what? Be ye followers. No, of set up your own thing. Be ye followers of no, me. No, listen to your wife. Be ye followers no, of me. No, secretly set up something on the side and wait for an argument to pop up so you could go and call other people from here to go be with you. Be ye followers of me. Read on. For this cause have I sent unto you Tim Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, 
who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ. Deacon Malachi tried to do that when he was down there. He tried to bring him into remembrance of how he should be in this truth. Deacon Malachi, he tried to do that to remind him of his place in this truth. Read on. As I teach everywhere in every church. This is the order in every church. You respect the fathers. Read on. Now some are puffed up. Some are what? Puffed up. That's what he is. He's puffed up now. After five years, he thinks he knows everything. Just like some of y'all are going to do right here. And y'all going to get disrespected and embarrassed and thrown out. What? Read that again. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. They reached the level of disrespect for Paul, who's responsible for most of this New Testament, to the point where they was like, man, we don't have to respect him. He ain't stepping to us, which is what goes through a lot of y'all people's mind. I seen it when I was in the street, and I see it here now. Some of y'all get puffed up like nobody won't check you. Read on. But I will come to you shortly. But Paul said, I'm going to handle you. Read on. If the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. He don't want to hear the speech of up running your mouth. He wants to see the power that he laid down in bringing you into sons of the Most High, into his spiritual sons. Read on. For the kingdom of God is not in words. That's why we don't want to hear your big mouth and your breakdowns and what you think you know and what you don't know. Read on. But in power. In the power of keeping these commandments. Read on. What will ye? Well, so what will ye then? Read on. Shall I come unto you with a rod? Shall I come unto you with a rod to check your behind? Read on. Or in love? Or in love because you humble down. When we realize that there's a disagreement, let's work this out. We gave that option to come in love. That's why both bishops got on him for an hour trying to straighten out the situation. Read on. And in the spirit of meekness. In the spirit of meekness. He's asking, how you want me to bring it to you? Read on. Um, chapter oh, okay, five. that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. What, what you just read? I was in the zone. <laughs> gonna die. Right. Zone. But listen, what you just said, uh, Deacon Asaph, is what I was gonna say yes. <laughs> because I was thinking about the whole thing, and the elder, both elders, was on the phone with this brother, and it's out of love. All of us, even though you hear the anger, you hear what's going on. It's the anger is because we don't want to see a soul get destroyed. That's, I want y'all to understand it. Y'all heard me really say some things. But it's all out of love and frustration and anger because I don't want to see any of my brothers or my sisters get destroyed, especially over sin. Because that's what it is. I'm going to just tell it straight. This, this is a matter of sin, a matter of not following the commandments of the Lord. We know, we understand that, and we're still trying to correct the brother, show him the love to get himself right so that he could be spared from the most High's judgment. That's what, this is, that's what this is about. When I heard that the bishop stayed on, I'm talking about the bishop Nathaniel, stayed on the phone an hour talking to the brother, scripture after scripture after scripture, trying to admonish the brother, trying to show him, and he still didn't want to hear it? That's when, that's when it comes to the point where you have to deliver him to Satan. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You understand? But it, but it pains us to have to do this, but we're going to deal with what this Bible say. If you're going to you're gonna, uh, if you're gonna seal your conscience with sin and you don't want to hear correction, then you got to go. Exactly. Get first, first Timothy 3 and 6. We're almost done. First Timothy 3 and 6, brothers. First Timothy 3 and 6. Uh, I just further wanted to say, we were talking about years in the truth. The bishop, both bishops and myself, but I must talk about the bishop. The bishop Nathaniel has been in this truth almost 30 years. Am I correct? Since 1990? 1990. 1990. What's the year now? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> 1990. I came in a year after him. So, and Elder Kanai came in right, right around that time. So you're talking about many, many, many years of experience. We've seen many things. Some of you weren't even born yet. So we know what we're talking about. Okay, when I heard, when I was listening to the scripture where he spoke about Paul said he had begotten the, the begotten the people, because meaning he's dealing with them like his own son. Okay? And that's how you look after the flock. That's how you look after your people. And the correction, we corrected him in the scriptures. We read the scripture earlier where your, your literal biological father chastised you physically. And you had honor toward him. We are your spiritual fathers giving you the most highest word in correction and you hate us. That's something, that's something you judges 
need to be aware of. First Timothy 3 and 6, read that. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. You brothers, five years in the truth, you're still a novice. Still a novice. The Bible says not to set you up over things lest you be lifted up with pride. Now, we see a lot of brothers coming in the offices of 10, 20 captains. They go out and they're setting things up and they have our full support. Why? Because they're in con constant contact with the leadership. This is what we're doing. This is our idea. We're going to implement this. Okay, do this, but don't do that over there. This is how we roll and this is how things are getting established in Israel. Okay, I want y'all to understand that. Um, there's a lot for us to learn in this truth, especially for y'all, a lot. And we, we, went, we went over in, when we was in the men's conference, we brothers wanted to know about the 666. We explained exactly what it is. They wanted to know about the I am. We explained exactly who it was. What I'm showing you is that knowing the deep mysteries of 666. Who is the I am? It means nothing if you're not applying love your neighbor as you love yourself. The deep basics. The deep basics is what you brothers need. But why don't you go into deep? No, I'm not going to go into a lot of deep stuff. There's a lot to learn. Don't nobody think you know everything. And God, that's why the Most High says, gather yourselves together. That's why another scripture talks about the sharing of talents. Working together as a what, brothers? As a body. That's something blacks and Latinos, we, we don't understand that. It's foreign, it's Greek. All right, back to Sirach 632, please. So not a novice, Sirach 632. I, I know we're almost done. Keep getting, it's only 716, bear with us a second. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, verse 32. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. That's the key. My son, if you will, you shall be taught. Read down, read down to 37. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt... If you will apply your mind, go ahead. Thou shalt be prudent. You shall be prudent. prudent another word for prudent is what? Wise. Go ahead. If thou love to hear. If you love to hear. Go ahead. Thou shalt receive understanding. You shall receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders. The Bible says what? Stand in the multitude of the elders. Are the elders somebody who got five years? No, that's not the elders. Five years, you've got to be kidding me. And, and another thing, the elder sisters is not a woman because she's up in age. She's right. 50 or 60. She's mama something. She's nobody. She's a, she's a baby too. Our elder, we keep forgetting also some of these men exalt the women because they memorize more precepts than the other women. <laughs> have, have we not seen that? Yeah. Because you got some men running their mouth because their wife could spit off precepts. All of the women that we've encountered that could spit off precepts at the top of the dome have been the most wickedest woman we've yep. ever encountered. Yes. The wickedest woman we've ever encountered. Because you got sisters that just memorized the Bible to have preeminence over you. Right. We had a sister he's, amongst he's us on, telling on. people the men are afraid of me. Right. He's on it. Well, a big mouth. Hey, Deacon Asaph, you just said exactly a lot of these, a lot of, when you got systems like that, they study so that they can rule over men. That's the reason why they do it that way. I'm not talking about them just studying like, like they normally supposed to study. I'm talking about when they do it in an arrogant sense of like what we're talking about here. I study with my wife. Exactly. What's, what's wrong with that statement? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's wrong with that statement? I want the new brother to stand up. What is wrong with that? What is, is the statement wrong? Is the statement wrong? I study with my wife. I study with my wife. Don't say nothing else. What's, is, the, is that an is that a all right statement? What's wrong with it? Uh, I'm supposed to study and then she's supposed to learn from me. Right. Man, this, guy, this guy just you walking. Just came in. He's walking. Exactly he understands right. it. Now, is that, is that according to us? Or is that according? What, what is that according to? There you go. It's according to the scriptures. So if you can back up what you say out of the scripture, the world need to shut the hell up. <laughs> what verse you in, Captain Isaac? Um, verse. You know 34. why I said that? You know why I said that? Because we heard the same thing. I know. Brother, instead of saying I study with my wife, she battles me in the scriptures. Right. Saying the same damn thing. <laughs> the hell you mean you battling with me? 
<laughs> and you're losing. Captain, where are we at? Where Verse we at? 34. Go ahead. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. So this is how your brothers are going to learn. Stand in the multitude of the elders. The elders are those with knowledge, wisdom, and experience in this truth. Go ahead. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Because we will discuss the parables. We, when, we, when we talk, our conversation is not basketball. It is not football. We might talk about a movie now and then, but primarily it's going to be in the scriptures. What the scriptures talk about, how to gather the brother, brothers together in a unified sense. That's what we talk about. That's our conversation. Go ahead. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him. And let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Now, does it say the elders are supposed to go to the young men and wear out the young men's foot? No. But a Negro always got it back. Here go a young man. You don't call me no more. Excuse me. Are you supposed to wear out my footsteps or I'm supposed to wear out yours? That's a nigga for you. I'm talking about young men in here. In here. You don't call me. Oh, I'm supposed to call you. I, I've heard that Orlando sisters say, well, uh, tell, the, tell the elder sister, Paul, yeah, uh, well, you have my number. You can call me. Let me tell you something. Us, another thing. Go back to what you just read, uh, what, the, what the bishop just pulled. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. In other words, you got to be willing to learn. That means you got to keep quiet. Stop talking. I didn't talk to all that to the young men. Don't talk. You guys talk too much. Just listen. Your job right now is to listen and to digest taking as much. When I was coming in, I used to sit. I, I, what these brothers doing right here, this was my job. What you all doing? Right, well, I was cleaning up. And uh, I'd get my plate of food. I used to sit right there, and I used to listen to the conversation. And after a while, a couple years, the elder knew my name. And then they would possibly ask me a question about something and include me in the conversation. But you let your words be few. I got Let the word you just sit there and you learn. Let I me say this real quick. When I came in, you remember at one West, it'd be so crowded, there'd be no chairs. I would walk in, and all the brothers would be like, yo, bro, there's no more chairs. And I'd say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. I sit, you see that young man sitting on the floor, these young kids? I'd be right there do sitting on the floor. There'd be a few of us right there on the floor. See, Grown men. Grown men. Why? We, I, they said, sit in the hall. I'm not sitting in the hall. I'm going with the elders on, I'm sitting right there on the floor. Ain't no chair. I don't care if ain't no We chair. were both there. That's right. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you that's the spirit because I was going to pick up. I'm going to pick up right where, where the elder just left off. Earlier before class came today, Brother LaCroix Matar came up front. And we were talking about some of that old stuff. And today is a lot different from the way it was in the past. Now, a lot of people have the luxury of watching classes on the uh, internet in the comfort of their home. We did not have that. And the school was open seven days a week. I was in this, I, him, all of us that were there, we were there seven days a week. I can tell you the exact hours. It began at 7 p.m. and it's supposed to end at 10. We stayed to 2 o'clock in the morning and had to work the next day. We did, and that was seven days a week. Why? Because of the script. Read the scripture again. And if thou seest a man of understanding. Stop. We saw those men of, of understanding. When, especially when I saw him, I, I was wiped out. I said, I ain't never heard people speak like this. I have never seen wisdom like this. These men got it all figured out. I already knew where I was supposed to be all the time. And that's where I was every moment that school was open. So they gave me keys to the school. That's how much I was there. <laughs> keys to the school. Elder, I wanted okay. to add something about you saying with the phone calls. Because I get that a lot. People say that... Um, just met me and complained that they gave their number and I'm not calling them. You have two kinds. You got the ones that are that disrespectful because they think we have nothing to do. But we're sitting back worried about, I didn't call so-and-so, let me call them so that they could think we're cool. And then you have the people that call you and they apologize for calling you. They say, I'm sorry to bother you. I know you're busy. But I have a question. Could you help me? If you can't help me now, when you have time, could you get back to me? Those people I deal with. But that nigga that acts like I got to keep calling him to keep a friendship, he'll, he'll see me again and be like, look, did you lose my number? I'm not calling you. 
You don't put no stipulations on how much I'm supposed to call you. With the work that we do in here, we on the phone. When while y'all asleep sometimes, we on the damn phone. So get that through your head. I've had a lot of people leave from here mad because they're not being catered to. You don't call me enough, right, Bezalel? You don't call me enough. I was there and they ignored me. To hell with you, nigga. That's why you back in the world. They don't want to talk to none of you young men here. They want to come straight up here and they expect to have an open door relationship with calling on the phone. You lost your damn mind. <laughs> I hope this kind of language ain't scaring some of you brothers. I'd be sitting back thinking something. I said, maybe we're talking too rough. But we didn't think that way in the old days. We, like, like the elder just said, they, what he said, he just gave y'all the soft version about how it is to deal with us when we, when we, when we read. You know, we read like we read all week. Man, they let you have it, bro. They tore your behind up. Tore you up. Exactly. Even the way we dress. Brothers yeah. coming in with a three-piece Brother, suit. Brothers, there's a call them the bugle boy look. There's a tear suit. Y'all don't even remember those clothes. Yeah. The bugle boy, they said, look at this faggot with the dead go bugle boy. That's how they were talking. You. They embarrassed you in Brothers front of everybody. Brothers walking with braids in their hair. Oh, they embarrassed the hell out of you. Get to Rock 8 and 9. So what we're showing you, brothers, is how to maintain yourself in this truth. Be around the elders, the leadership, and you will gain understanding. And we will give you the blessing to go forth and set things up, but maintain within the body. Don't, Because you can do more as a unit than you can do as an individual. I need all you to understand that that has always been our people's problem, trying to operate as an individual rather than the body. That's why Esau get things accomplished. Exactly. And black people and Latin people, we don't get nothing done. Yes, Josiah. Real quick, I just want to point it back to uh, what Deacon Yawasab said when, when you guys were at the men's conference. We, you, you were talking about that closed fist, about how all the fingers agree together and you can do the most damage. That's a beautiful analogy. I, I, I think about that a lot, about that unity. Mm -hmm. When you think about the scriptures, when you read about the Apostle Paul, he was one of the most popular men in the New Testament. But he still had to go back to, the, to Jerusalem and report to who? To Peter. He didn't do his own thing. So that's a very glorious spirit. Exactly. Exactly. Sirach 8 and 9. Watch this. You young men, watch this. Listen good. Sirach chapter 8 verse 9. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need requires. Just like we learned of the elders prior to us, now we are your elders, and we're showing you and giving you the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding that has been given to us. Okay? From there, get me wisdom of Solomon. Because in this truth, you need men of experience. You can have a brother who can quote, and it can, like, like y'all were talking about the sisters. Brother, I know you don't want to admit this, but some women are smarter than men. They can read. I've known a lot of sisters who can read chapter after chapter and retain it. Then, when it comes time, she's going to tear you up. And like you were saying, some of them don't study to build their husband. They study to battle and tear him down. That, God can't use a woman like that. She's meant to be a pillar of what? Rest. Rest. Okay. Read that. Where we at? Um, Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 8. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 8. If a man desire much experience... She knoweth things of old. The she is wisdom. When you read verse 1, it tells you wisdom reacheth from one end to another mightily. Now in verse 8, it says, if a man desire much experience, she, meaning wisdom, knoweth things of old. Go ahead. And conjectureth aright what is to come. She knoweth the subtilities of speeches and can expound dark sentences. She foreseeth signs and wonders and the events of seasons and times. So wisdom will help you and guide you as long as you need experience. Not experience in the world, because I, I got experience. No, experience in the truth. You want to follow a knucklehead who got five years experience? No, brother, you're making a grievous error. He ain't been through nothing. Been through nothing. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 16. I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I come to great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. 
Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom That's it. and knowledge. Solomon had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. So because a brother has knowledge, he can quote, he can break down things, yet he, has, he lacks what, brothers? Experience. experience. You need experience. You need it. From there, get me Sirach 34, 9 and 10. Watch this. With that experience, you, have, you need wisdom, you need knowledge. Watch this. Sirach, how can I gain experience? Here's one way. Sirach 34, chapter 9, and verse 10. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things. A man that has traveled knoweth many things. Go ahead. And he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. So in this truth, because many brothers have traveled before they knew the truth, like brothers and sisters in the military. They've done much uh, traveling, but they lack the experience of God. Like, where was that thing? The, remember the Behistine Wall that was, yeah. that was blown down? That was a, in, Iraq. in Iraq. You had many brothers and sisters who went to Iraq. But when they saw the Behistine Wall, which had our history on it before it was destroyed, they didn't know what it was. They looked oh, look at a pretty wall. And it gives you the history of Israel and their captivities. Then they destroyed the wall, and our brothers and sisters who were in the military, in, uh, 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 where is it, Iraq, yeah. looked at the wall and said, this is a pretty wall. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. So that's not the traveling God's talking about. Read that again, Captain. A man that have traveled knoweth many things, and he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. He that hath no experience knoweth little. He that has no experience knoweth little. You're, here you go counseling a young man about marriage. He ain't never even had a woman. And you counseling with him. Can you counsel me with my wife? I know you know a lot of scripture. You simple, brother. You simple talking to that young man. <laughs> How would you counsel men about their women when the leader is being controlled by the woman himself? <laughs> How in the world is that? That, that alone is going to just crumble. Brother's going to come and going to say, listen, I have a problem with my wife, such and such. She rules over me. She's this, that, and the other. What in the world could, what kind of advice could you give him when you have the same thing going on in your house? The very, the very reason why you broke away from here was because of that particular reason. That's why I said you cannot set up something in sin. And then you're going to ask for blessings and you're trying to get us jacked up. Exactly. Read that again, Captain. He that hath no experience knoweth little. So it's not so much all the scriptures you can quote. You need experience to back it up. Go ahead. But he that hath traveled is full of prudence. That's why, brothers and the truth, we tell the officers, the captains, we want you men. To, we are, I told you, officers and captains, to get your what? There's passports. Passports. People contact us from outside of this country. We need you men to go there. And guess what? There's different brothers in Canada don't have the same mentality like brothers in New York. Brothers in Alabama, when you teach Alabama, it ain't the same spirit like New York. Oklahoma, the, the mindset varies from state to state. Traveling will show you that. Even the way they dress, they might all try to dress like the rappers, but you'll see differences in our people from different places. That's why you, it's good to travel. And we behoove you brothers, come up in your understanding. We, we want you to travel. We want to send you forth to help build this word. From there, uh, Romans 5 and 4. The book of Romans, chapter 5 and verse 4. And patience experience and experience hope read the verse above it verse three and not only so but we glory in tribulations also so paul tells us all about tribulation tribulation you get tribulation when you start it it begins to give you what brothers experience Ex when you start to go through things that builds experience in this truth because now it's up to you how are you going to apply what you've been studying all this time your wife says, let's separate and do our own thing. Now, here's your trial. What are you going to do? Your wife says, do what I say and shut the hell up. Now comes, okay, well, how are you going to apply? Read that again. And not, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, mm -hmm. knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation works patience. And patience experience. And patience works experience. And experience hope. And experience builds your hope in this truth. Is that it? That's it for verse 4. Okay, from there, give me Sirach 25 and 6. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 6. Much experience is the crown of old men. Y'all see that? Much experience. So you need experience. Sirach 119 now. 
And then y'all said you said you had something you were going over. Yeah. Sirach 119. Sirach 1 verse 19. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding, and exalteth them to honor that hold her fast. So brothers, you want to hold on to the wisdom you're gaining here? It's going to teach you skill and knowledge of understanding. And it will exalt you to honor. That's what this truth is all about. All of us in here will be exalted to honor. We must maintain, we must go through our trials, our tribulation, face them, and overcome them. Okay? Don't run from it. Yeah, that's the, what the elder said was uh, on point, definitely. Face your, face your uh, situations and triumph through them. That's what the scripture is talking about, because you're going to be tempted, like it says in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and 1. That's a good chapter. Brothers should read it. Um, also, there's a video that we have um, out here on YouTube on, and in the, um, and in the uh, website entitled, How to Identify the Jezebel Spirit. And the reason why that class is so important, I was reflecting on last week when I, Elder Kanai had mentioned about baby Jezebels. <laughs> you have little Jezebels in the house. Little kids, they learn that thing. Y'all got to, and Deacon Lob, I think, last week said that all of our women learn how to be Jezebel. When they come in here, because they all got it in them on some level. In here, they learn to get rid of it. But this society teaches them how to be Jezebels. What I mean by that? How to rule over the man. They teach them that. It's inbred in them. They don't say they don't have it. Don't say, I don't have it, because you do. It's, it's taught to you. On TV and music, video, everywhere you look, there's something out there suggesting you that you're over the man. Okay? So, I'm going to ask you new brothers, you older brothers, experienced brothers, you can chime in. I'm going to ask a question. The subject about the garment came up. And the conversation went where uh, the woman said, well, only my Lord can order me to wear that garment. Not you. Somebody tell me what kind of spirit am I dealing with? Now, this is the woman talking about, she's talking to a, a brother, and she's saying, that her, she's saying that her husband, she's calling him Lord. Only my Lord can have me to wear that garment. What's, what, what's happening in that statement? Jonathan, I see you got your hand up. I ain't gonna be long, I'll be pretty quick, okay. Tell me what's, what's going on in that statement. You understand the question? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, she has a rebellious spirit and she does not respect, respect the leaders of that congregation. And you went deep on them. You went two or three levels above where I was asking, but that's good. That means you're thinking. Explain what you mean by that. Because you, you went all the way to the end. So how is it that it shows that it's disrespect in the congregation, in the leadership? First of all, um, the leadership is... is well, the elders, they are the leadership. Mm -hmm. And even the scriptures go forth and, and, and say to you that um, for, for her Lord to be, get the wisdom, he has to first get the wisdom from the leader. So she's actually stepping above protocol okay. in doing what she has done. All right. Um, where you was going, I'm going to elaborate on it. The order is set about the garments. Y'all with me? All the deacons, everybody. That was an order that was established. I read a scripture last week in Joshua about what Joshua said. And we was talking about order again. Joshua was the leader who came out. Moses had died coming out of Egypt. And the brothers said, we know that the Lord is with you and we're going to follow with what, what the program that you set up. And if anybody don't go with that, we'll put them to death. In other words, they understood order and structure. They understood that, and they were going to enforce order and structure. So that's the same thing that's going on here. Garments was established for a reason, to establish order and structure. Now, you almost forgot to bring up this point about sports. Oh, right. <laughs> if you want to say that garments and uniforms are not necessary, think about teams. A football team. You have the Baltimore Colts. I'm not really familiar with this stuff, but I'll say the Baltimore. But the Baltimore Colts. What, what what colors do they wear? 
Indianapolis Colts. Huh? Okay. You tell us. You tell us. Well, I don't know. Are they still, what, did they change it? Somebody help me out. It's, it's called a what? Indianapolis Colts. Indiana, Indianapolis Colts. So they changed now. So there goes my education. That's beautiful. I love it. So the Indianapolis, they used to be Baltimore Colts years ago. That's the last time I watched football. That when, is that the game where the, they throw the pointed ball through, through the hoop? You, you okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> and they hit, it, they hit it with a bat. That, that ain't it, right? <laughs> All right. Anyway, on the football, on the gridiron, on the football field, you have a team that have blue and white as their colors. Then the team that they're going to play also have blue and white. Are y'all with me? Before the two meet on the field, because somehow the, the, the score, whatever, lined up where these two teams have to play, both of those teams have two sets of garments, at least. And if they, in other words, if both teams get on the field and they both have blue tops, one of them will change to have blue pants and a white top. Why? So, they, so that you can identify who they are. That's what garments do. That's, that's what order does. You have to have structure. It identifies who you are. And it sets a spirit as well. Garments, we, me and you were talking about this, um, um, well, I don't want to get into the experiment. There was an experiment done about what garments and clothing do. If you, when you put on certain clothes, it, got, it, it, turns, it turns your spirit. Can I get a witness? If you dress like a hoe, you're going to be a hoe. You're going to begin to fulfill the roles of a hoe. If you dress like a bum, you're going to fulfill the role of a bum. If you dress in clean clothes, your, your, your clothes are, are nice and pressed and, and you know your shirt is clean and everything else, you're not going to act like you're stupid. You're going to try to emulate the... the uh, the outside um, if you drive a nice car you're not going to get into the car uh, looking all bummy you're going to try to accentuate what, you, what you're about it, my, my point is clothing is a the clothing guides puts you in a spirit to fulfill whatever the, the uh, situation is about Right. Somebody, one brother, not here, another, an ignorant brother said, Israel, the Israelites never wore uniform garments. He said they dressed however they wanted to dress. Think about it. Let's use common sense. You got an army of a thousand. You're all wearing black. The opposing army is all wearing black. Now you face each other, you attack, everybody's fighting. How do you distinguish the enemy from your, from your men? You can't. That's the point. That's why when you look at those, you ever look at like Gladiator or let me give it, like Rome had a certain way they dressed. When you look at them Kung Fu movies with the armies, the opposing army had a separate flag and dress code than the team, the ones they were fighting against. That's where football bases it on. Y'all see that? That's common sense, but a Negro grew up in a ghetto who don't want to learn nothing. You can dress how you want to dress your head. They have no understanding of military. No, even in the war, correct me if I'm wrong, the way the United States dress is different than the way the Chinese army dress. It's not the same. So that when they go hand to hand, face to face, toe to toe, you're going to know who your men are and who the enemy is. Right. That's common sense. Hello, Israel. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.